Hello everyone and welcome to our video on statistical process control and this is the third video in our SPC analysis or control chart. We have already two videos in this series. The first one is the X bar and R chart and the other video is on the C chart. So for this video we're going to look at the P chart and for this video I picked the unequal sample size because it's more complicated than the equal sam sample size or the constant sample size over here. If you look at the formulas, they are the same for both of them. The only difference here, if the sample size, or in this case the attempts are the same, they're all let's say 400 or 100 or 300 or whatever the value is, then all I have to do is take the square root of that, whatever the value is the sample size. But since they have different sample sizes, then I have to take the average of these sample sizes. We call it an I bar over here instead of sigma square root of n. So let's start by finding first the proportion because we're doing proportion p chart. So proportion found by taking the number of defects or error divided by the sample size. This will give me the proportion for each one of them. So I'll repeat that one more time. It's the errors, defects, divided by sample size. And I'm just going to drag this over here to make it fill up the rest. So now I have the proportions because everything is done on the proportion, not on the error themselves. Don't worry about this as I did in the other two videos in this series. This is conditional formatting which allows Excel to tell me right away if I have any points beyond the lower or the upper control limit. So we're going to come over here now and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the total, the sum of all samples I took. Since they are different sample size, I have to take the sum of those. If they have the same sample size, let's say 100, all I have to do is multiply 100 by 20, and that's the total number of items sampled. Let's take the number of errors as well, add all these errors that we got, and we got 902. So now, what's p bar? p bar is the average. So we're going to take this total number of errors divided by the sample size, the sum of all samples, sorry. And we get 0 0.109, etc. Now we have to find n bar. What is n bar? It's the average of the sample size. So either I can take the formula average of all of these, Or I can take this total divided by 20 because I have 20 samples. The average is better because you don't have to worry about dividing by 20. Now we found Q bar, which is basically 1 minus P bar. Here we go. Next, we're going to find the upper control limit. Remember, the upper control limit is wet. It's p bar plus 3 times the square root of p bar times q bar over, let's call it n bar or n i. So all I have to do is type all of that. See b bar, sorry, b26, which is p bar, plus 3 times the square root of what? p times q divided by n. So B26 times B28 divided by B27. The lower control limit is the same formula, except it's going to be minus 3 instead of plus 3. This is the UCL. And you can see once I typed it, see, these were red. Once I put the formula, and now I have the UCL, only one value is red. 
which means only one value is greater than the upper control limit. For the lower control limit, as I said, it's going to be the same formula, except this is going to be minus. And you see that the lower control limit is 0 0.063. Now, similar to the C chart, if this is negative, then I have to take it as 0. So I will do it over here to show you what we did also on the C chart. So to make Excel right away, put the value 0. If this is less than 0, if it's negative, I will use the if statement. The if statement, as you can see, it asks for a logical test. It returns a value if it's true, a value if it's false. So the logical test here I want is if this is negative. If this is negative, return 0. If not, return the whole value. So if it's 0, it will return 0. If it's less than 0, it will return 0. If it's greater than 0, it will return the value itself. We did the same with the C chart. With the C chart, it was negative. That's why it returned 0. Okay. Last thing for us to do is check for the lower and the upper control limit, which one is beyond those limits. And again, I will let Excel do that for me. And I've done that in the other two videos. I'm going to show you how to do it one more time quickly, conditional formatting and these are the rules how do we do that i go to conditional formatting and I click on a new rule but i have to highlight first these values here or the column so i'm going to go to new rule and i'm going to say okay i'm going to format only cells that contain contain what a value that's a greater than greater than what the upper control limit so I'm going to select the upper control limit so any value that's greater than the upper control limit highlight it for me and I can choose how I want to highlight it make the background yellow make the font red you want it bold do you want border for the cell it's up to you once I click OK, the rule is there. And you can see that now this value is yellow with red font and border was it. And I do the same for the lower control limit. But for the lower control limit, what do I choose? Choose less than the lower control limit. If it's less than the lower control limit, use different formatting. Don't use the same formatting for both because you, will, you wouldn't know if this value is beyond the upper control or the lower control. Distinguish them and you can always have different values showing a different format for the lower and upper control limit. So for this series, we have three videos. If you want the X part and R chart, we have one video for that. We have a video for the C chart and a video for the P chart. Depending on which control limit you're trying to do, Excel will do all that for you. All you have to do is write these formula. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on Statistics, quantitative control method using Excel, SPS, and much more.